All right, so on this channel, we do a lot of chicken. We've done a couple different variants of like steak or beef, but completely vegan. And today I wanted to test out a couple salmon recipes, but they're not my own. Hey guys, I'm Candice Edgy Veg, and welcome back to my channel. We do a number of really fun things around here. Sometimes I show you how to cook quick, easy, delicious recipes. Sometimes we try to turn things into something else and other times we test other people's recipes. Now, in the last month, I've come across a couple salmon recipes online that are completely vegan that I'm very, very intrigued about. Um, so we are going to test today, we're gonna test Samantha from It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken Salmon Recipe. And then the other recipe that I found for salmon is from Lisa Kitahara from Okonomi Kitchen. Correct me if I'm mispronouncing that. I did try to look through a couple of her videos to see how she pronounced that. Um, couldn't find anything. So let me know if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. But both of those recipes, they're both so different. They're really interesting takes on salmon and I cannot wait to give them both a try. Um, in terms of eating salmon, I mean, even before I was vegan, I didn't really eat a lot of seafood. And I remember when I was a kid, my mom made fish sticks and there was like the skin or scales on one of them. Like I bit into it and there was like a little bit of scales and there was just something about that that grossed me out to the point that I never ate fish again. So like I really don't have like a history of vantage point. Like I don't have anything to go off of. So for me, this will be mostly just about flavor. Like I remember like fishy flavors, but nothing specifically salmon. So it'll be interesting. Lisa's recipe is a vegan teriyaki salmon. It's really interesting. It uses a really interesting variety of ingredients. Most of the ingredients I did have to go to my local Asian grocer to go get, which is always a fun adventure for me. And now that, you know, grocery stores are more or less open here in Toronto, um, it was actually fun to go and like actually shop, which was great. So she's using things like bean curd sticks, kombu dashi, nagaimo or Japanese mountain yam, and tofu, and then we are making a teriyaki sauce. And then Sam's recipe is more of like a traditional salmon. She's using beets to really get that salmon color. Both recipes, the bases are tofu, so hers is tofu as well. And then um, for a marinade, she's using vegetable broth, nori, apple cider vinegar, beets for that color, miso. She's also using like a um, something for a skin. So we're going to use nori for that. And so I'm really excited. There's two completely different takes on salmon, but they both look so delicious and I'm so intrigued. All right, so we're going to start with Sam's recipe first from It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken. Um, just because this one takes an hour, the other one takes 20 minutes. Um, so we're going to start with this one. The first thing I'm going to do is prep my tofu. So this is extra firm tofu. I'm gonna cut it in, well, she says to cut it in half lengthwise and then in half lengthwise again to make four long skinny tofu strips. Then we're going to take chopsticks, place them on either side of each strip. And then um, we're just going to make like little cuts throughout to like, we're scoring it essentially. It's about half, right? And then in half again. Eighth of an inch. So the whole goal here is to make it flaky. I'm just gonna flip them. So that they're even on both sides. And then you just wanna go ahead and do that with all of your tofu sticks. The next step that she has is us making the marinade. Um, and I love all recipes where just everything's done in the blender. So this entire marinade right into the blender. Great, awesome, we love that. So I'm adding some vegetable broth, um, torn sheets of nori, apple cider vinegar, beet, uh, red miso paste, garlic powder, salt, and turmeric. We're adding our broth, vinegar, nori sheet, miso. We have the turmeric, the garlic, and the salt. And then I'm going to start on the low end of the beet just because beets are pretty aggressively red. We can always add more, but we can't take away. I still can't really smell anything because I have COVID, or I had COVID. Salty, smell salty. I have no nuance in my smell. 
<laughs> at all still. It's pretty bad. All right, so I'm going to place my little tofu fillets here into whatever dish you have. And then she says to pour the marinade over top and let it marinate for 30 minutes or overnight. Just gonna let that marinate for 30 minutes and we can get started on the other salmon recipe. All right, so I have my bean curd here. Lisa says to use kitchen scissors and shred it. Also, I'm gonna point this out now before somebody else does. I'm aware of the state of my nails. Don't come for me in the comments. They are being fixed today. I'm really excited about this recipe. I've been staring at this for a few weeks and just dying to try it. And I rarely ever get to use like bean curd, but I love it. I just never really get to cook with it. So super pumped. All right, so I'm going to start, I just switched to a new bowl. I'm going to start with the crumbling of my medium tofu. And I'm just gonna put it right into the bowl here. I think a lot of this is going to be done with hands because Lisa does say that she wants it to be like a paste. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. It's very intricate. It has a lot of really interesting ingredients from like a, you know, like a North American typical Western grocery store seems kind of out there, but it's really not. I mean, most places have, you know, a Chinese grocery store or an Asian grocery store in their neighborhood, at least if you're in a big city. Um, and then the steps are really super easy, which we love. I'm going to add the um, mountain yam and then some potato starch. That's going to help it stick together, I assume. Kelp granules and salt, smoked salt. And I'm gonna go in with my hands. Mix it together until it starts to kind of like stick together. So it's definitely sticking together. Mix everything together until well combined, which I've done. Cut two pieces of nori out, so I'll do that in a second. Lightly coat with potato starch. Lightly coat, what? Maybe this? At this point, we are guessing. So, okay. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is, or is it lightly coat this with potato starch? Help! <laughs> Lightly coat with potato starch and then divide the mixture by two. So I think because we're talking about the mixture, it's lightly coat the mixture and then divide by two. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some potato starch on the top. Something like this. Lisa, please don't be mad at me if I do it wrong. Okay, I've divided it in two. Now I'm going to cut my nori in two. So it's half a piece of nori. And I'm going to spread one portion on one piece. It doesn't really mention how thick it's supposed to be. It doesn't look overly thick in the photo. Like I think you could probably make three out of this mixture. See, for me, I think that this could make a whole other one. So I think that with this, you could get three out of them. I'm just worried that it's going to be too thick for frying. So I'm gonna leave it at this. Plus to me, this is kind of what it looks like in the photo. Plus also, I mean, my tofu block could have been a bit bigger. So I'm not going to make them any bigger than that just because I don't think it's gonna fry nicely and evenly um, on the inside as much as it does on the outside. So we're going to cook this over medium heat in two tablespoons of cooking oil, tofu side down until golden brown. So it doesn't say to flip it or anything. So I'm going to heat up the oil, put it tofu side down and cook it until it's browned. All right, and then we're going to make our homemade teriyaki sauce. All right, to this I'm going to add the sake, the mirin and the sugar until the sugar dissolves. So we're just going to let that sugar dissolve over medium heat. And then we will add in our soy sauce and then our ginger. So Lisa doesn't say to flip this, she just has to cook it um, like tofu side down, but it's nice and crispy on the tofu side and then like really soft on the other side. So I think I'm going to flip it. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit longer on this side. So it gets like really nice and crispy. I don't know if you can see. So you can kind of see it's getting nice and crispy, which I would really like for this side. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead. If I did it wrong, then I did it wrong but I think it would be really tasty. And like, I would like it crispy on both sides. So I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit just because we have that nori on the other side. Uh, the sauce is more or less ready, which I'm super pumped about. 
I'm gonna take it off the heat so it doesn't reduce anymore. It smells really good. All right, to Sam's recipe again. I have some cornstarch here. I'm just putting it into a shallow bowl. For the skin, we're going to use this nori. So I'm gonna very carefully, very carefully pick that up. I'm gonna dredge this nori on the, in the uh, marinade here and just stick it to the back. And I'm just gonna like super carefully place it onto this cutting board until we heat up the oil. I'm gonna do that with all of them. That uh, pink color, like that pink color is really pretty. I'm hoping that this nori doesn't stick to my cutting board. All right, there we go. This one's a little bit thick, but that's okay. I'm gonna start by heating up the oil first and then I'll dredge them. So this is our oil heating up and I'm just going to dredge right here so I can just dredge and put it right in the oil right away. This one, so right into the cornstarch. You said all corners, all sides, get off any excess. And then she doesn't really say cut side up or down, I don't think. No, and it's two to four minutes each side. So I'm just gonna start with the tofu side down. Just because if we lose the integrity of the tofu, at least then we just have to flip it one more time as opposed to like losing it in the middle of cooking. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. And voila. I gotta be pretty gentle with these just because of the scoring. They're quite fragile. Voila, so two to four minutes on each side. All right, so now Lisa says just brush it with sauce. That sauce smells unreal. I'm gonna brush both sides with sauce. It kind of reminds me of like an egg pancake with some, with like a nori sheet. It looks really good. So I brushed the bottom. Now I'm gonna flip it onto the plate that we're serving it on and I'm going to brush the top. She says to serve it on a bed of rice. We're eating so much food today, so I'm not going to serve it on a bed of rice. I just kind of want to see what the, um, the salmon part tastes like. It looks really tasty. good. Like, I never really ate fish, so I'm the wrong judge for this, but everyone around me is saying that it really does look like salmon. Yes? Yes. Yeah. yeah? All right, so it is taste test time. We have Lisa's here. To me, this looks more like a crab cake or a salmon cake. It definitely has the flakiness, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm getting like crab cake vibes as well. Mmm. Mmm. Salmon cake. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like filet. But I think that's what she was going for. Mm-hmm. I like I the is interesting. Mm-hmm. I like the like um difference in texture. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like if you just did tofu, it would be too mushy, but the bean curd, like, you get that flakiness. Yeah, I really like the texture. Um, I feel like I could use more sauce. Mm -hmm. Like I would drench mine in sauce. It's really good. It's really good. I really like it. And the um, the Japanese potato has a really nice, like almost like soft, yeah, texture to it. It's a really nice combination of textures. Yeah, I like the uh, the tofu and the bean curd and the, mm -hmm. the potato. It's really nice and crunchy on the outside. Now Sam's. I don't know. Do you just want to? Oh wow! When you cut into it, it really like flakes. The little cuts really just like flake open. Mmm, it's nice. Mm -hmm. I think if this was marinated overnight, it would be bang on. Yeah. I did it for the 30 minutes, like which was the minimum amount of time, but I think overnight, this would have been insane. But the underneath with the salmon skin mm. turns like a little bit gray and you cut into it, it's like the skin falls off it the way that salmon, oh, this is, this is pretty close. Well done, ladies. Mm -hmm. These are really great. We love both of them. Yeah. They're really, really tasty. I definitely could see both of these like making their way into my cooking for my partner. Yeah, I would make them for sure. 
Yeah, and like really cool techniques. I definitely learned something today. Straightforward recipes, easy to execute, and really delicious. Um, I think with Lisa's, I definitely would double up the sauce though, because that sauce was unreal. And if I was having that with rice, I would like that rice to be covered up in that sauce. Oh, it was really tasty. I would make them smaller and like dippable and maybe do like little crab cake vibe. And definitely tons of that sauce. I would smother that all over everything I eat. I grew up eating a ton of salmon. Um, it was just like something we had regularly when I was little. And I thought that Sam's recipe looked exactly like salmon. The skin on the back, the way that it flaked when you cut it open, it just, it had the right color, it had the right consistency that a salmon filet would totally have. I realized that Lisa's was not meant to be like a salmon filet, at least I don't think so. Um, so kind of apples and oranges there. Good job, ladies, I love them. I would definitely make them again. I would recommend them. And I think that I would actually love to like play with these different techniques and see what else I can come up with. By the end of it, I'm just like, just, let me take a nap here right next to Harley. <laughs> so those are two delicious vegan salmon recipes from Lisa and Samantha, and I will leave their links to their recipes in the description box down below or in the comment section. So make sure that you check them out and their amazing vegan recipes. We love them. They're both Toronto and local. Oh, I didn't know that. Right? Awesome. So Toronto gals like us. If you love these videos where we test out other vegan bloggers or YouTubers recipes, let us know in the comment section down below or give us a big, huge thumbs up. And if you have any requests, you can leave them in the comment section as well. And um, I guess like subscribe and all that stuff. You know what to do. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next time. Bye.